Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Here at The Vineyard, we come to church with the expectation to experience God. As we gather, we're joining God's mission transforming all things. So, in today's service, we'll sing directly to God, we'll study the Bible together, and observe a moment of silence so the Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts. And then, we'll take time to respond accordingly. Our service will last just over an hour, and you can follow along to know what's coming next. Grab your phone and go to votrweekly.org. It's the best way to stay up to date on everything at the Vineyard. In addition to the order of service, you'll find song titles, announcements, sermon notes, and next steps. If you're new here, we'd love to connect with you. While you're on votrweekly.org, click the Next Steps tab and introduce yourself using the quick form. Or grab a Next Steps card from the back of a chair, fill it out, and drop it in an offering box. We'll follow up this week to start a conversation. Vision Night is Wednesday at 6.30. Come discover dreams and goals for our church in 2023 and the part you can play. Coffee and dessert will be provided. Hope to see you then. So often, artists and creatives work alone. We're hosting Kingdom Creativity Night on January 14th at 6.30, where you can grow in your God-given creativity in the context of Kingdom community. We'll provide light snacks and refreshments. You bring your creativity and tools. Not sure what to bring? We'll have some supplies available for inspiration. Get details and RSVP at BOTRweekly.org. All the ministry of our church is funded by the generosity of people joining God's mission, transforming all things. And we're amazed at how God uses our donations to form our hearts and transform the world. Instead of passing offering baskets, we'll have boxes in the back of the sanctuary where you can place your gift. You can also give online. Just tap the giving link at votrweekly.org and follow the prompts. Service is starting in just a few seconds, and we can't wait to worship with you. Whether you're on the live stream or you're in the sanctuary right now, we want to invite you to stand as you're able and lift your voice as we sing to God. Good morning, Vineyard. Would you stand as you're able? Hey, Happy New Year. This is the first time we've met in person in 2023. It's so good to see you. If you're on the live stream, welcome. We're glad you're here. To start our worship this morning, Julio is going to read from Psalm 89 for us. I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in all heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The, angelic, the highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. Let's worship together.
righteousness alone for this to stand before the throne for this to stand before the throne for
worship you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you for all that you will continue to do in our lives and in our midst. We love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for worshiping with us. Go ahead and grab a seat and Happy New Year to everyone joining us this morning. It's so great to worship with you. As you take a seat, I want to take just a quick moment to welcome everyone on the live stream. We know every Sunday there are a number of you who can't come and meet with us in person. I just hope you know that we're praying for you, that we love you, and uh, we were thinking of you when we design our services as well, praying that God will minister to you in your own home this morning. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff. I'm the lead pastor here at the Vineyard Church. And before we begin, I want to invite you to a special event that is happening in this very room on Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. It's called Vision Night. If you've never been to a Vision Night before, I would really encourage you to come. It would be incredibly meaningful to me and the rest of our staff if you could circle this date on your calendar and join us on Wednesday at 6.30. Vision Night is a great opportunity for you to connect with other people in our church and hear about what God has for us in the upcoming year. You know, as a staff, we have done a lot of work praying and discerning and asking God, where do you want to take us in 2023? What are our top priorities and objectives? And at Vision Night, we always share those. And then we encourage everybody to respond to those objectives and priorities. And this is a great night to learn more about who we are, but also where we're headed. Two free things, which are great for everybody, dessert and childcare. So we got one, woo. I don't know if it's for the childcare or the dessert, but it felt like a both. It felt like a both and. So you're going to want to come for that. It is going to be a special night, and like I said, it would be very meaningful if you were able to make it. Well, for the last few years, every January, we have done a series called Love FOCO. Love FOCO, and the series is simple. We take the entire month of January, and we talk about how we can be a church that impacts our city, loves our city, and demonstrates the love of Christ to all those around us in such a significant way that people would respond to the gospel. And like last year, we interviewed a different ministry partner every Sunday. We're going to do the same thing this year. And these are ministries that we support as a church, whether that's financially or prayerfully or through creative outreaches and and sending volunteers to them. And I'm excited because today we're going to start with our friends at Young Life. And so I want to encourage you to help me welcome Ian, who is here to represent Young Life. Ian, can you come up on stage? Ian is part of the leadership team at Young Life. They office right here in our space and in our church, if you didn't know that. And specifically, Ian leads a ministry with Young Life called Capernaum, which I'm really excited for you to learn a little bit about. But man, we're glad you're here. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and, and how we can partner with you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, like you said, my name is Ian Hargis. I'm on staff with Young Life. We're a parachurch uh, outreach ministry, and we pride ourselves on reaching kids who maybe would never feel comfortable coming to church. We go to where kids are, and we teach them about Jesus. And also, like you said, I'm with Capernaum, which uh, is the branch of Young Life where we do ministry alongside people with developmental and intellectual disabilities. So that's what I've been doing for the last eight years. Um, it gets its name from Mark 2, when uh, the man with a paralysis is lowered through the roof. Um, and that's what we want to be about. We want to bring our friends uh, who maybe couldn't get to the feet of Jesus on their own. Uh, we want to be a part of uh, bringing Jesus to them or bringing them to Jesus. That's a perfect foreshadow for what we're going to talk about today. Like, we didn't even plan perfect. that. That's but perfect. friends bringing friends to Jesus. That's fantastic. Pull so, the thread through. So does Capernaum happen here at Vineyard Church as well? It does, yeah. So like Jeff said, we office over there and we use the warehouse and it's, it's been perfect because before we came a year and a half ago to office at Vineyard, we didn't have anywhere to meet uh, every week. And so we have a completely accessible space for all of our friends to meet on a weekly basis. So that's been wonderful. Oh man, that's awesome. If you were to, well, I have so many questions. That's great. One, I'm ready. 
how aggressive a facial hair do you have to have to serve with Young Life? Like, because that is a killer mustache. Like, I'm just sitting, that's a good mustache, isn't it? That's, I mean, is it a prereq or? No facial hair required. Okay, all right. This is a bonus. All right. How, how, if somebody were to get involved with Young Life Capernaum Mm. or any of the other ministries, because I know there's a variety of things that you guys do here at our church and around the city, Mm -hmm. how best can we get plugged in and how best can we get involved? Um, well, there's so many different levels of involvement. Um, there's, you could financially send kids to camp. We do camping twice a year in the winter and in the fall. So you could send kids to camp. You could, um, give a dinner to our team for our our volunteer leaders. Um, you could help us with rides. We always have kids with disabilities. I've never met someone who doesn't want to come. It's just a matter of getting them there. Mm. So, um, it's, it's a matter of, we need help with rides. We need help with um, making friends with people with disabilities. We have so many friends and, and we don't, we never have enough leaders. So if you want to come and befriend someone with a disability, uh, we would love to, um, talk about that, but there's really, there's so many different ways to get involved. Um, I'm hearing a lot of really practical ways people can serve too. And I'm thinking like of our two church fans that we have in our parking lot. And I'm looking at a lot of faces who could potentially drive and do things like that. And everyone can be a friend. So totally. Man, I'm so glad that you're here. And you're going to stick around through all of service, Mm -hmm. and you're going to hang out after service. So out at our cause wall where all our TVs are that represent the different ministries that we partner with, Ian will be there. And I would love for you to go and introduce yourself and learn a little bit more uh, maybe from Ian directly. And you've got friends with you here too. Yeah. Yeah. My friend Will over here in the, will you raise your hand? Yeah, He says, hi, this is Will. Um, He has taught me everything that I know about disability. Um, I am not a minister to people with disabilities. I minister with people with disabilities. And Will is on the leadership team with us, with Capernaum. And I couldn't do it without him because he experiences Jesus in a different way than me. And we are more whole when we're serving together. So that's why I wanted him to come and support me this, this Sunday. So that's my friend Will. He will be outside in the lobby, and you can come meet both of us if you like. I, I, Vineyard Church, I just hope you know, like all of these stories happen because uh, of our partnership with Young Life. And every month we support Young Life financially. Every month we pray for them. We get to interrupt their meetings because we go over there and we talk to them. They're just, what I've loved uh, so much are all these different stories, all these different ways you can partner with them. But then as you office with them, you get to know them in a deeper kind of way and you fall in love with them even more. And that is a fantastic sign of a ministry that is uh, continually worth our support. So would you join me in praying for Ian and, and Young Life and, and also our morning together? God, thank you so much for Ian. We know that he is here representing Capernaum, but he's also here representing so many other leaders and so many other students who are being impacted with the gospel through their ministry. I ask in Jesus' name that the harvest would be plentiful for Young Life in 2023. I pray that they would see an increase in people interested in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that they would see an increase in people connected relationally. I pray that they would see an increase in their financial abilities to serve and to reach and to get more kids to camp. And we pray a blessing on their leadership as well as everybody else who is engaged with Young Life. Lord, let your kingdom come through Young Life on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank Love you, man. Thanks for being up here. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ian. So good, so good, so good. Well, Natalie and I, many of you know this, we moved to Colorado a number of years ago, about five and a half years ago. And like many transplants in the room, we didn't know anybody when we moved here. We didn't know anybody. We were surrounded by people But it was a very lonely time for us because even though we were full of excitement and we were following God's call to uproot our family and come out to a church, and it was a really clear call from God that gave us a lot of confidence, we didn't know anybody and we came alone. We didn't have any pre-existing relationships here in Fort Collins. No family came with us and our kids were younger. They were four, two, and six months old at the time, so you're in that very overwhelmed stage of life. And many days, Natalie and I, we found ourselves even struggling to find the energy that it required to make friends. And I realized that's kind of a depressing way to start a series about loving Fort Collins and the first Sunday that we've had together this year, but it actually gets worse. 
Because a few years into that, we had a few family tragedies. Many of you were by our side for those tragedies. And then shortly after that, COVID hit. And so any of the early relationships that we started to build basically ceased to exist for about 18 months. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves in our kitchen again, praying a common prayer in the Faust family, Lord, will you send us friends? Have you ever prayed that prayer? That is a real prayer. Lord, we need friends. Now, thankfully, it didn't stay quite so pathetic. We do now have a lot of friends. We know many of you really, really well, and we have a lot of meaningful relationships. But life changing relationships, relationships that that you will walk with people through thick and thin, those types of relationships, they do take time to develop. They take effort. You actually sometimes have to be a friend before you can receive a friend, and it takes energy to do those things. But Natalie and I knew that if we were going to thrive, if we were going to thrive as a married couple, if we were going to thrive as parents, if we were going to thrive as pastors, if we were going to thrive just as, as human beings living in northern Colorado, that we were going to need godly friendships, and it was worth the effort to pursue them. Friendships are vital for your mental health. They're vital for your spiritual health. There are even studies coming out now, we'll talk about later in this series, that link longevity of life to meaningful relationships. It's a fascinating study that Harvard did, and we'll talk about that later in the month. But God will also use the friendships and the relationships that you have in your life to advance the kingdom, to influence the world around you, and to help you join his mission of transforming all things. And so during our Love Foco series this year, we're going to spend the entire month talking about how we can love our city through godly friendships. What does it mean to be a best friend? What does it mean to forge a kingdom friendship or a spiritual relationship and to walk that out over time? What do these relationships actually look like? Of course, we'll go to scriptures to find out what godly relationships look like. And we have more examples than we have weeks in the year. But we're going to focus on four key relationships, four key friendships that you can find in scripture. We're going to study those and apply them to our life. And we're going to ask those questions of ourselves. What does it look like if I became the best friend my city ever had? What would it look like if I became the best friend my neighbors ever had? What would it look like? to have kingdom relationships. To start, we're gonna talk about a key ingredient for any kingdom friendship. A mark of a godly friendship for all of us. If you want to love Fort Collins, if you wanna love others, and if you wanna be a godly friend yourself, then we need to start with a message titled, Friends Introduce Jesus. Friends Introduce Jesus. Jesus. Now, if you're here this morning and you personally have never been introduced to Jesus, then I hope by the end of our time together that I at least begin to scratch the surface of introducing you personally to Jesus this morning. And by the end of our service time together, I'll give you a chance to respond to the gospel and to start an eternal relationship with Jesus today. And I'm going to ask you that not out of trying to convince you or persuade you or create any kind of argument. I'm not going to try to get you to give your life to Jesus today to kind of make you attend church more often. That would be really, really weird. I just want to introduce you to Jesus because he is the man that has changed my life completely. And I want to be a godly friend. And the best way I know how to do that is to lovingly introduce you to the man who's transformed everything. But first, we're going to look at our scripture for today. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And the context of this passage basically starts with this man named John the Baptist. And John the Baptist had an incredible ministry. He was discipling all kinds of people. He was baptizing them in the River Jordan. But he knew that he wasn't the Savior. He knew that he wasn't the Messiah, the one to come and transform all things. And so as he was drawing people to himself and discipling them, he was actually pushing them away so that they would follow Jesus instead of him. And this is the introduction that you kind of have to John the Baptist in chapter 1, and it's the context of what we're going to read today. John 1, verses 40 to 45. This is how it begins. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men, the men who heard from John and said, follow Jesus. 
So Andrew was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, we have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip said. Come and see for yourself. It starts with John the Baptist pointing everyone to Jesus. And the first thing that Andrew did when he experienced Christ was he went and got Peter. And Philip, by the way, did the same exact thing. He went and he told Nathanael. See, one of the most powerful things that you can do as a friend, one of the most powerful things you can do as a real friend, a loving friend, a godly friend, one of the most life-changing things you can do is introduce your friends to Jesus. Friends introduce friends to Jesus. It's what they do. And I hope and I pray that in 2023, each and every one of us will become a little bit more like Andrew and a little bit more like Philip that we would become a church filled with Andrews and Phillips. So you'll notice in the passage, they weren't concerned with convincing anyone. They weren't concerned with perfect arguments or apologetics or theological answers. And all of those things have their due time and they're important and they're good in their own season. But in this particular passage, they weren't concerned with those things. All they knew was that they had seen and heard and primarily met someone so wonderful and so amazing and so life-changing that they could not keep it to themselves any longer. The news was too good to keep to themselves, and they wanted their loved ones to experience Christ just like them. One of the things that I love about this passage is that you see both similarities and differences in how Andrew and Peter, or how Andrew and Philip walked about their business, right? And, and the fact that there are similarities and differences, they're good for all of us because it creates room for all of us to play and all of us to become a little bit more like these men. In terms of similarities, they both focused on anticipation, not on answers. They focus on the anticipation of Christ, not on theological answers. See, they had hope in the coming Messiah. They had hope in the promises of the Bible, and they had hope that God would answer their prayers, and that when they found Jesus, the answer to all of their prayers, they had to tell it to others. It starts with Andrew. He went and he told Peter, he said, we found the Messiah, the coming one, the anointed Christ. So they were anticipating a Messiah who would come and reconcile all things, redeem all things back to the Father. And Andrew is basically saying, we have found the one who will make all things right. We found the one who will make all things right. They knew that Christ would bring his kingdom and the oppression and the pain and the hurt and the brokenness that they were experiencing in their own life, but also the stuff they were witnessing in the world around them, that all of it would be solved with the coming king. And Philip told Nathanael something very similar. He said, this is the one that the Old Testament has been talking about. This is the one that Moses and the prophets and all the promises that come before the Gospels, all the promises in the Old Testament point to this coming king and we found him. He's from Nazareth. Nathanael pushes back a little bit. He goes, Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Now, some of you might have experienced pushback in your own life when you're trying to share Jesus with others. I know I have, but notice what Philip does. He doesn't get all up into arms. He doesn't try to create a five-point argument to convince that person that truly Jesus is the Messiah. He just goes, come and see. Come and see for yourself. First, you have Andrew in verse 42. It says, Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. And in Philip, in 46, come and see for yourself. See, they're anticipating this coming Messiah. And that's what they shared with one another. But the execution of it was a little different. 
the way they talked to their friends was a little bit different. Look at Andrew again, one more time. Verse 42, it says, then Andrew brought Simon Peter to meet Jesus. Andrew goes, I found the Messiah. He's the coming king. I'm going to go tell others about it, but actually I'm also going to go and get them and bring them to Jesus. It's a little bit more direct. He brought Peter to Jesus. Now we could have fun and we could kind of argue and have interesting theological discussion on whether or not this was a reflection of Andrew's personality or Peter's personality. Right? Peter was known to be a little bit more strong-willed, and so perhaps Andrew said, well, with Peter, I'm going to have to be a little bit more forceful and a little bit more direct, so I'm just going to straight bring him to Jesus. We don't know. It would be an interesting conversation, but we don't truly know the answer, and so because we don't know the answer, I don't want you to get hung up on that question. Instead, I would rather us spend a little bit more time asking the question, do you think we could be a little bit more like Andrew? And if we became a little bit more like Andrew, could we discover the next Peter? Peter went on to be an apostle. He wrote part of the New Testament. He preached all over the land, saving all kinds of people. If we became a little bit more like Andrew, could we discover the next Peter? Well, that's an interesting question to ponder and to think about. Allow that to move within your heart because you never know who you might encounter in your life. You never know who God might place in relationship with you. And if you commit to being a little bit more like Andrew, we all might discover a few more Peters, and that would be incredibly, incredibly powerful. That's different, though, than what Philip did. Same authentic and passionate response, but Philip had a different, a different, uh, different way of going about it. See, he said, we, we found the guys from Nazareth. There's a little back and forth, and instead of meeting Nathaniel's argument with answers, he said, just come and see for yourself. Verse 46. Isn't that freeing? I don't need to convince you. I don't need to persuade you. You've got questions. I've got questions. Don't we all have questions? Come and see for yourself. No pressure, no convincing, no arguing. Just come and see. I love this passage. I love this passage. It's so inspiring to me. Because the truth is a lot of us struggle with sharing our faith. Right? A lot of us, we, we don't know what to say or, or what to do, or, or we, we come up with a hundred different answers for the hundred different questions that usually, quite honestly, we never get anyway. And this passage is so freeing to us because it shows us we don't all have to be great evangelists. You don't all have to be the next Billy Graham. Can we get an amen? You don't all have to be the next awkward street preacher. This is good news, wrapped up in the good news. We don't all have to be great evangelists, but we can all be great inviters. You don't have to be the next Billy Graham, but you can be the next Andrew. You can be the next Philip. You can just introduce people to Jesus. Jesus will do the heavy lifting. We can't save anybody anyway. We can't forgive anyone of their sins. That's his job. He's the one who died on the cross for us. We can't do that for others. But man, I want to be the guy and I want to be the church that introduces scores of people to the one who can redeem all things. The good news was just too powerful for them to keep to themselves. And they knew and they trusted that if Jesus is who he says he is, if he is the only one who can save, if he is the only one who can forgive, if he is the only one who can offer actual transformation to our lives and the world around us, then my friends need to know this man. My friends need to know Jesus. And they were committed to introducing their most cherished relationships to the Lord. Based on this passage and based on this scripture here in John and on the lives of Andrew and Philip, then I, I, I just want to start the year by offering you a challenge, offering you personally a challenge. Will you introduce people to Jesus this year? Will you introduce people to Jesus in 2023? And I'm not saying that you need to evangelize the world. I'm not saying that you're going to be somehow a, a bad Christian if you don't share your faith perth perfectly, if you don't do it once a week or once a month or anything like that. All I'm asking is, can you be a little bit more like Andrew, a little bit more like Philip? Can you simply bring people with you wherever you're going with Christ? Imagine how that might change someone's life. Imagine how that might change your neighborhood or your community or your school or this city or the world around us. Teenagers in the room, I hope you know this applies to all of you. My wife, Natalie, her, her life was changed because some middle schooler in her school invited her to young life 
when she was in middle school. And then they started taking her to summer camp. And that's where she received salvation and gave her life to Christ. Middle schoolers, high schoolers, you never know the power of your invitation. All you got to do is bring him to Jesus. He'll do the work for you. Adults, parents, are you willing to be a taxi service to go and get those kids to introduce them to Jesus? Never underestimate the power of a full tank of gas. (laughs) You can change someone's life by going and picking them up and faithfully introducing them to Jesus. I know some of you do this so well because I've met your friends in the lobby. We've prayed together. We've gone out for lunch together. And I even make this commitment to you that if you introduce people to Jesus, if you invite people to go on the journey with you, and if you bring them here to church and you don't know what to say, I'll say it for you. If you don't know how to evangelize, I can share the faith and I can teach you how to do it as we go together. And you can be the one who introduces and I can be the one that follows up or we can reverse roles and we can lead people to Jesus together. Now, he might ask you to share your story. He might ask you to do follow-up. He might ask you to buy a couple lunches. But we're talking about eternal salvation when you introduce people to Jesus. This news is too good to be kept privately in our own hearts. Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to you, then I know that the same thing you've received for him, you want others to receive too. I know that's true of you. Of course it is. For me, Jesus has changed everything. How can I not tell someone? How can I not introduce them? He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Through Christ, my life has completely changed. It's been completely transformed. I've been forgiven of my past. I've been adopted into God's family. I've been given a new life and a new heart. I've experienced transformation from being an angry, addicted, workaholic mess whose sins were stacking high and pain was running deep. And now I am an adopted son of God, spirit-filled and set free. The news doesn't get any better than that. How can we not Give that away or at least introduce others in our life. Of course, I want that for everyone in my life. And you might be here this morning. You might be thinking to yourself, I've never experienced that kind of transformation. I have no idea who that Jesus is or if he would do any of that for me. And if that's you, all you have to do is take a giant step towards him today and surrender in your life. The step of giving your life to Christ can happen for you today. You can make him the Lord and Savior of your life, receiving the forgiveness of your sins, following him as best as you can from this day forward. There'll be ups and there'll be downs, but you'll have a Savior with you every step of the way. And I promise that he will transform your life. If you've never made a decision to follow Christ, then at the end of our service, I'm going to invite you to do that this morning. And it's a decision that has eternal impact. You can start an eternal friendship with Jesus today, and it will change everything like it's changed everything for me. But even if you gave your life to Christ long ago, keep asking that question, who in my life needs to be introduced to Jesus? Who in my life do I need to invite? Do I need to introduce? Do I just need to bring along as I am going with the Lord? I imagine that as I'm preaching this morning that God is already laying names and faces on some of your hearts. That as I'm talking about inviting and introducing uh, Jesus to people, some of you are thinking about children. Some of you are thinking about spouses. Some of you are thinking about family members, friends. Some of you are thinking about a neighbor, a coworker. Don't dismiss those faces and don't dismiss those names. That could be the Lord speaking to you right now about who he might have you introduce this year, who he might have you introduce to Jesus this year. I'll talk more about this at Vision Night, which by the way is Wednesday at 6.30 in case you forgot. (laughs) But to make this really easy for you this year, we're going to do a bunch of different things here at the church. For one, as a staff, we have circled 10 Sundays throughout the year that are going to be heightened invite Sundays. They're going to be fantastic Sundays for you to invite a friend who's exploring Jesus. Maybe they've walked away from the church. Maybe they've walked away from Jesus. Maybe they don't know anything about him. And those Sundays will be great for anyone who wants to learn more about Christ. They'll be good for longtime followers of Jesus, but they'll be fantastic for anyone who wants to learn more about the gospel. We'll talk more about that at Vision Night. We also have fun events that will be really easy to bring someone to. 
We have textable invites that we'll share with you. We even have hard copy invites. We call them our vineyard six packs because we wrap them up in six. A little provocative, I know, but you won't forget it. You can get a fresh six pack every day you leave and you can start handing them out. Because we realize not everyone's a great evangelist. This is a real thing. So instead of being hard on yourself about what you're not good at or what you can't do, simply be like Andrew and be like Philip. Be released of any pressure to save anyone in the world. You can't do it anyway, like I said. All you have to do is introduce and invite. This is so near and dear to my heart because as I've shared with many of you before, I have zero memories growing up of ever being invited to anything related to Jesus. I don't have a single memory of being invited to church. I don't have a single memory of being invited to Young Life or a summer camp. When my life was falling apart from age 12 to age 19, and I mean really falling apart, I had nobody put their arm on my shoulder or put their arm around me and look me in the eye and say, Jeff, man, because I love you and because I don't want this for you, I want to introduce you to someone who can change everything. I never had that. Now, I'm not too bent out of shape about not having that when I was younger because I'm very thankful and I'm very grateful for my testimony with Christ and the way that he has saved me. But I definitely don't want that same story to be true of me as I move forward in my life. I don't want to... I don't want to spend time thinking about what I didn't have. I'd rather spend time praying and dreaming and thinking about who God has placed around me, who I can see, who God's put in my life, who I might meet in the next coming weeks or months that I could introduce, that maybe I could share the person of Christ with, that that I could introduce along my own journey. Because it never happened for me when I was younger. I want to make sure I don't repeat that same silence in my life from this point forward. Instead, I'm interested on being the best friend that my city has ever seen. I want to focus on being the best neighbor I can be, on being the best soccer dad I can be with all the other parents on the sideline, the best golf buddy I can be, or the best dad to my kids' friends, driving around the city, inviting them into my own home. And of course, Being the best friend and being a kingdom relationship to all these different folks, it includes a bunch of different things in the scripture, and we'll unpack three more as we move through this series together, but it most definitely includes introducing them to Jesus. It most definitely includes introducing them to the one who can change all things. So as I close this morning, I just want you to consider this with me. Whether you're a longtime follower of Christ or you're brand new to the faith, Don't dismiss what Andrew did. Don't dismiss what Philip did. Really sit in that passage. Really sit in that scripture and consider the power of a simple introduction. Consider the power of a simple introduction. Imagine how our city might change. Imagine how your neighborhood might change. Imagine how you would grow in your own faith and spiritual maturity if you committed to being a godly friend to those that God has placed in your life. I mean, whose life might change because of your introduction? Who can you introduce to Jesus, trusting that he will do the hard work for you? Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the way that you are drawing us closer and closer to yourself. Thank you that we all have stories that can be shared. And thank you that we all have people in our life who can be introduced to Jesus. Speak to us now about how you want us to reflect on this truth and respond to your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're new to the vineyard, after every sermon, we always create an opportunity for you to just sit quietly and reflect on everything that you've just heard. This has become a really important part of our service because we realize if we just rush off to whatever is next, sometimes we can forget and we can miss the still small voice of God. And so our band is present, but they're just going to play quietly. We're going to draw the lights down in a moment. We're actually going to invite you to just sit right where you're at and prayerfully reflect on all that you've just heard. If you're a follower of Christ, let me encourage you to just pray, God, who do you have in my life that I could introduce to Jesus? 
How can I be a 21st century version of Philip or Andrew? And if you've never given your life to Christ, then I want to introduce you to Jesus right now, the Jesus that I know. The Bible says that Jesus left heaven and came to earth, that he was born in a manger, that he lived a perfect and sinless life. The Bible also teaches us that at the end of his life, he was nailed to a cross, crucified for you and for me. That through the breaking of his body on the cross and the shedding of his blood on the cross, that now we can be made whole and our sins can be forgiven. They buried Christ after he died in the grave and three days later, they rose, he rose back from the dead. And the promise is this, that if you put your faith in him and you confess that he is your Lord, that he will forgive you of your sins, that he will heal you of your pain, that he'll give you a purpose you never knew of before, and you will start an eternal relationship with him today that will last forevermore. If you've never made your first time decision to follow Christ, or if you've wandered far and you need to come rushing back into the kingdom, then I want you to pray about that during this time of reflection and pray about what it would look like if you gave your life to Christ today. I'm going to go sit down, and then in a few moments, I'll come back up and lead us into a time of ministry and response. And during that time, if you're ready to respond to Christ by giving and surrendering your life to him today, then we're going to invite you to respond. But for now, take a few moments to pray, to sit with God yourself, and I'll be back up shortly. to creating that time of quiet reflection, we always want to create an opportunity for you to respond to what God might be doing in your life. There's a variety of ways you can respond this morning. Obviously, our team is present. They'll sing a few more songs. And so we would encourage you to lift your voice in worship as a response to God. Maybe you came prepared to give as an act of worship and you can give at any point by using the boxes in the back or giving online at any time. Our prayer team is in the back of the sanctuary over in this corner. You'll be able to find them. They all have lanyards on, and they would love to pray with you for anything and everything that you might be going through. You might be starting the new calendar year, and you need God to move in your life or to release a blessing into your life. Go get prayer for that. Ask God to move. In response to this sermon, you, you might need prayer to combat fear or shame anything that's keeping you from an introduction to Jesus. On the first Sunday of every month when we gather, we also invite the entire church to take communion together. And so in a moment, we'll invite you forward to take communion. You can take the bread and you can take the juice and you can reflect and remember and worship the one who broke his body so you could be made whole and shed his blood so that you could be forgiven. And I've mentioned it a few times, but you can also respond by giving your life to Christ today. 
And the way that we're going to do that is in a moment, I'm going to pray over all of our responses. And if you want to give your life to Christ, I'm going to invite you to pray with me a prayer of giving your life and surrendering your life to Christ. But then I'm also going to ask you to raise your hand. And the reason why we invite you to raise your hand is because the Bible says that if we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and we confess with our mouth that he is Lord, that we will be saved. And so there's a belief and a confession. There's a both and there that happens, an internal recognition, but also a public display of our response to Christ. And I'm just going to invite you to raise your hand in a moment if that's you, because we would love to bless you and pray for you as well. But won't we pray, won't you pray with me? Pray over all of these ways we can respond. And if you're ready to give your life to Christ, then I'll invite you to pray with me in a moment as well. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, would you fall upon us right now? We need your spirit for any kind of transformation. We need your power for any kind of change, any change that's long lasting and meaningful. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to move upon us right now. Empower us to respond in the way that you're calling us to respond today. And if you want to give your life to Christ, then pray this prayer with me right now. Just repeat it either in your, in your head or just quietly right where you're at. Jesus Christ, I come before you. And I recognize that today I am in need of a Savior. My sins have been stacked high, but I trust you for forgiveness. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I surrender all that I am to you. I believe that you died for me and were raised back from the dead so that I could be set free. I give you my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer of salvation, can you just raise your hand right where you're at and let me know so that I can see? God bless you, man. I see the hand, I see the hand. Guys, his life has changed forever today. Any other hands? Bless you. Three people that I see committed their life to Christ today. May the Holy Spirit fill you. May you experience the transformation of Christ. You're online and you prayed that prayer, would you let us know by just mentioning something in the chat so we can pray for you as well? Because today you started the rest of your life with Jesus. Let's respond as God leads. Bless you as you worship. In a few songs, I'll be back up. I see you, my man. Bless you. Bless you. Come forward for communion. Go back for prayer in a few songs. I'll wrap up this morning.
Start the year off together this Sunday. 
God bless you. I do want to remind you, Vision Night is happening on Wednesday, and Ian is right outside those doors. I know he would love to connect with you and introduce you to our friends at Young Life. Have a great Sunday. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.